I'm Dr. Rachita Navara, cardiologist specializing in heart rhythm disorders, hailing from the birthplace of our field in San Francisco, California. I'm honored to be a councilwoman on the National American College of Cardiology Electrophysiology Leadership Council. And I've been asked to speak to you today about atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation is the most common heart rhythm disorder in the world, affecting 34 million people. In normal hearts, the top of the heart beats strongly and in sync with the bottom of the heart, so that blood flows smoothly and continuously to the rest of the body. But in atrial fibrillation, or AFib, the top of the heart twitches or fibrillates without fully beating, causing the top to go out of sync with the bottom of the heart. Because of this mismatch, blood doesn't leave the top of your heart as efficiently, so it pools and can lead to life-threatening blood clots, which can escape your heart to the rest of your body, including the brain. This is why AFib causes one in four strokes over the age of 40. Atrial fibrillation can also cause the top of your heart to go too quickly, which can lead to palpitations and difficulty catching your breath. Often, in these cases, the bottom of your heart is trying to keep up with the rapidly fibrillating top of your heart, leading to dangerously fast heart beating that drops your blood pressure and doesn't get enough blood to the rest of your body. This requires emergency treatment. Over time, your heart may also weaken by the constant stress of atrial fibrillation, leading to congestive heart failure. So what can you do to lower your risk of getting AFib in the first place? Well, the top lifestyle changes are in line with what we recommend for healthy living in general. Controlling blood pressure, reducing weight, cutting out heavy alcohol use, quitting tobacco, and getting tested for other conditions that can increase the risk of AFib, such as thyroid issues, sleep apnea, and diabetes. The risk of atrial fibrillation also increases with age, especially over age 65. Having a first-degree relative with AFib can also increase your risk of developing it by 40%. AFib can come and go and is most often caught on an EKG that reveals irregular activity in the top or the atrium, as well as an irregular heartbeat, which you can feel as an irregular pulse. If you are diagnosed with AFib, your doctor may also recommend getting an ultrasound of your heart or an echo to see if your heart has gotten weakened or enlarged due to the AFib. It is important that you seek treatment right away for atrial fibrillation, as you will likely benefit from many medications, not only to treat your heart rhythm and heart rate, but also to specifically reduce your chance of stroke and other complications. Thank you for learning about atrial fibrillation today, and be sure to check out more content from the American College of Cardiology on how to keep your heart healthy and strong.